This is a video in clinical medicine from the New England Journal of Medicine. The uses of electrocardiographic monitoring have evolved from the tracking of heart rate and basic rhythm to the detection of complex arrhythmias, myocardial ischemia, and changes in the QT interval. Electrocardiography, or ECG, is an inexpensive, reproducible, non-invasive technique that can be invaluable when it is performed correctly. This video focuses on three-lead and five-lead configurations, which are commonly used in real-time ECG monitoring. ECG monitoring is used in many clinical settings, including intensive care units, intermediate care units, operating rooms, emergency departments, and ambulances. ECG monitoring should be performed during the administration of anesthetic agents, after cardiac surgeries, after the placement of pacemaker leads, and after endovascular procedures involving the coronary arteries. It is also indicated in patients with acute myocardial infarction, unstable angina, or acute pulmonary edema, as well as in many other clinical situations. There are no contraindications to ECG monitoring. However, because of the potential for undertreating or overtreating the patient on the basis of ECG data, the clinician should enlist the help of more seasoned clinicians when appropriate during recording or interpreting the ECG. Most ECG monitors display one or two waveforms at the top of the screen. If desired, additional waveforms can be displayed. A menu on the monitor may allow modification of the amplitude of the graph to optimize viewing of waveforms. In addition to the ECG equipment, you may need alcohol wipes and a razor. Wash or sanitize your hands before entering the room and starting the procedure. If the patient is conscious, explain the procedure before proceeding. If needed, use an alcohol wipe to remove excess oil from the skin to improve the electrical conductivity. If the patient is hirsute, consider shaving the skin in the areas where the electrodes will be placed. Check the expiration date on the electrode packet. If the electrodes have not expired, open the packet and remove them. If the patient is conscious, explain that the electrodes may feel cold. Place the electrodes with gentle downward pressure. To minimize the appearance of artifacts in the ECG, avoid bony prominences and major muscle groups when selecting sites for electrodes. If you are using snap-on lead wires, attach the lead wires to the electrodes before placing the electrodes on the patient's skin. Attaching snap-on lead wires to electrodes after the electrodes have been placed on the skin may require you to apply undue force, which may cause patient discomfort and may cause the conducting gel to spread, making the gel ineffective. Lead wires are standardized according to color, although the color coding is not uniform worldwide. The lead wires shown in this video conform to the color conventions recommended by the American Heart Association. Next, adjust the ECG setup. Confirm that specific alarms are enabled as appropriate. Selection of the appropriate settings for the alarms on the monitor depends on the patient and the clinical circumstances. ST segment alarm should be set at one or two millimeters from the patient's baseline, rather than the isoelectric line, to avoid any false ST alarms. A setting of one millimeter is appropriate for patients at high risk for ischemia, and a setting of two millimeters is appropriate for more stable patients. For patients with a pacemaker, you may need to select settings specific to the pacemaker to decrease the possibility of counting pacemaker artifacts as QRS complexes. A common arrangement is the three-lead configuration, also known as bipolar lead monitoring, which involves the use of electrodes at the right arm, the left arm, and the left leg to produce leads 1, 2, and 3. This configuration is typically used to detect simple arrhythmias, such as ventricular fibrillation, 
and to synchronize the electrical discharge with the R wave in cardioversions. However, three electrode bipolar lead monitoring is not sophisticated enough to provide diagnostic data for non basic arrhythmias or ischemia. The five lead configuration includes electrodes placed on the four limbs and one precordial electrode, either V1 or V5. This configuration allows for the recording of a true V1 lead, which is necessary for the accurate diagnosis of arrhythmias associated with a wide QRS complex, such as bundle branch blocks or ventricular pacing. Unfortunately, because of the lack of multiple precordial leads, the five lead configuration is not sensitive enough to consistently detect myocardial ischemia. Many diagnoses can be established with ECG monitoring, including atrial fibrillation, atrial flutter, supraventricular tachycardia, wide complex ventricular tachycardia, atrioventricular block, ST segment elevation myocardial infarction, long QT syndrome, ventricular fibrillation, and a variety of other conditions. Trained personnel are needed to operate the ECG machine and to interpret its data. The diagnostic algorithms used by the ECG machine have a high sensitivity for the detection of certain conditions, but because the machine's specificity for these conditions is relatively low, over-treatment is possible. ST segment alarms, for instance, can be misinterpreted as myocardial ischemia. As a result, myocardial ischemia may be over-treated. Other situations of misinterpretation and possible overtreatment include those in which low amplitude muscle tremor or a noisy baseline is interpreted as atrial fibrillation. Therefore, healthcare providers must use their clinical judgment when interpreting the data. To avoid the problem of artifacts or poor quality tracings, make sure that the electrodes have not expired that conduction gel has not become desiccated, and that the electrodes have adequate contact with the skin. Check and adjust placement of the leads. Adjust the amplitude on the monitor as needed. Patient motion can also cause artifacts. To minimize the occurrence of artifacts, place the electrodes on areas where there is minimal muscle movement, such as on the torso near the limbs, rather than on the limbs themselves. In the operating room, electrocautery can interfere with the ECG tracing, causing artifacts that can be misinterpreted by the machine as QRS complexes. Interference from nearby devices that use alternating currents can also cause artifacts, as can faulty electrodes. ECG monitoring is rarely associated with complications. The most common include skin irritation and hyperpigmentation of the skin under the electrodes. ECG monitoring is useful, simple, and widely used in hospital-based care and in many other clinical settings. Clinicians must be familiar with proper use of this monitoring tool and know how to interpret the information it provides.